Hi, my name is George Kogu. I'm the market unit vice president for China Snack Foods. Um, the brands, just to give you a sense of what we sell here, is the Lay's potato chips, Quaker Oats. Um, so I manage that for, for China. Um, my career so far, well, I've I've been with PepsiCo now for about 15 years. I had uh, worked with Unilever. I started my career actually with Unilever in Brookbond. I worked there for three years, and for the last 15 years, I've been with PepsiCo. Ten years of them, I spent in uh, the PepsiCo India uh, beverage uh, system, where I worked both in the field and in the headquarter. And in 2004, um, I moved with PepsiCo to Bangkok. That was my first international assignment, where I looked after traditional trade and sales uh, training for uh, the Asia region for PepsiCo. And in 2006, I moved to China uh, in charge of the Eastern region. In 2007, I moved on to handle all of China. Uh, so that's my background. China, my first sight of China was definitely a shock. And I think most people who come here will get shocked on two fronts. Uh, one would be food and language. I think for any Indian that comes here, uh, you will get definitely challenged uh, on these two fronts. Not in a negative way, I'd, I'd emphasize on it being different, uh, not so much negative. The language uh, is, is uh, doesn't have any sounds to it, it's a language of meaning. So even things like names, uh, you have to find the Chinese name, you cannot use your, your normal name. My Chinese name is Chao Guo Fu. Uh, my English name is George Kogu. The two kind of sound the same, but the meaning of my Chinese name is about a man from a prosperous country. Uh, and it kind of sounds like my English name. Uh, the other thing that, that shocks you for an Indian, I think, when you come to China, is this, this just the sheer size uh, and a scale uh, of the infrastructure. The pace, the speed of the place, the scale of the place, and the infrastructure that's around does shock you in a very positive, in a different way, saying, wow, these guys have done this in the last 10 to 15 years. That's, that's really amazing. In terms of uh, a personal experience, I think the biggest thing that hits you is in China, you've got to be very, very specific it's, uh, uh, and detailed. I guess in India, we're, we're used to a little more ambiguity and we understand ambiguous directions. In China, I think you've got to be a little more specific. An experience I have is um, I got challenged on food and I was traveling in, in an interior market and I was traveling with my colleagues and I said, okay, I'm going to have dinner with all of you today. Can you please make sure that uh, there is some non-seafood available because uh, a, lot of my, a lot of the food that you get here is, is uh, seafood and I said, I don't really eat seafood uh, and so just, just make sure that there's some non-seafood material for me. And I, you know, my team, my colleagues, they were, they were really prompt. They were calling the, the local uh, office and telling them, okay, dinner tonight, make sure that, that the arrangements are right. He doesn't eat seafood. So I thought, you know, everything was fine. And when I arrived at the dinner table, uh, there was this huge dinner table and a lot of people had come because I was meeting up with them. And on every plate, there was fish, there was shrimp. And there was different fish and different shrimp. It was just that on the table. And then there was a bowl of peanuts. So I was actually a little embarrassed. I said, wow. Uh, I specifically said, I don't want seafood. And all I see on the table is seafood. So I very politely took my chopsticks and started eating peanuts because uh, I didn't want to be rude. I didn't want to you know, tell them anything. Uh, and they, after about five minutes, they kept watching me and saying, you're not having any food. So I looked at them and said, but I, you know, told you I don't eat seafood. And they said, no, 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 we made sure there is no seafood on the table. All this is river food. And that is China. Uh, they were, I was very specific. I don't eat seafood. And they were very specific in understanding me. They didn't give me any seafood. They gave me food from a river. So they didn't understand uh, my instruction. Maybe what I should have told them was, if it swims, I don't eat it. And that, that's how specific, uh, just an example, but uh, that's, in a lot of things that I do, that's how specific you need to be. You cannot leave your instructions ambiguous. Um, finally, 
if I had to summarize from my point of view what China has been for me, I would say uh, uh, three Ds. Um, I think the first thing that I would look at this change is that diversity. Uh, for an Indian, you know, just just seeing the diversity of the different country, another country with a billion population, but very different workforce, very different age groups, a um, uh, lot of female uh, workforce. Uh, so it's a, the diversity part does hit you. Uh, the cultures are very different. The second thing I would say is it's highly differentiated. For me personally, um, um, dealing with modern trade, uh, dealing with uh, uh, a highly evolved uh, retail market compared to in India. So just it's a very differentiated experience that, that I have had here in China that I don't think I could have got in India. So it uh, balances out well. Uh, and the third thing is just the level of detail. Yeah, you you have. I have been asking myself, wow, I thought I was clear, and then you realize that maybe I wasn't so clear. So that would be the, the third thing that I look at. Overall, uh, it's a fantastic country. Um, it's really been a tremendous experience, and I consider myself lucky to have really been uh, worked in two of the most dynamic countries in the world. Right now.